Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. The project that we're going to be working on today are crossbody bags. I'm making these out of sample swatch fabrics. Then we'll have some credit card pockets in the bag as well, which will also be using sample swatches. The lining will be fabric that I've picked up in a deceased estate a few years ago. The only thing that we're going to put in the bag that's new are the handles, the buckles and the magnetic snaps. So no zippers involved today, it's all just simple sewing, crossbody bag made with two fabrics and all rescued or recycled or repurposed fabric. Hang around and we'll do this together. Okay, I have a bunch of swatch fabric all sorted here. All I've done is taken them off the sample card and put them into pairs. With this particular project, I'm going to be using two pieces of each of the samples and Thankfully, they're both the same size, so that makes it a lot easier for me. If you decide you want to make this and you're going to use quilting cotton, you can follow along and do exactly the same thing with your regular fabrics. So the sizes that we're going to be using today for the, the main fabric, we need one of each in contrasting colours. So we need a nine inch piece by ten and a quarter inches. And for our lining, we need two pieces that are nine inches by nine and three quarter inch. Then we need something for the handles. So if you choose to use fabric for your handles, then you'll need some extra for that. I'm going to be using the strapping that I usually use. So the first thing we want to do is place right sides together. And you'll notice that I've still got remnants of paper in there. It's not going to cause any problems with these bags. It's going to be hidden away in the seam. So all we need to do is place these two fabrics right side together and then I'm going to stitch down both short edges. So you'll see here I've got some overlocking here. This is just a nylon overlocking or serging thread that's done when the sample cards were made up. All I'm going to do here is a quarter of an inch seam all the way down on both sides and I'll do that for all of the pieces that I've got here. With the short edges stitched together, I've just got a little tube here, we need to top stitch the edges that we've just done. What we're going to do is cut this in half, so we'll find the centre position, and I've marked a centre just there, and that is five and one eighth of an inch for myself. Now, if you're just using regular fabrics, don't bother about cutting your fabric at ten and a quarter inches, just cut it at ten inches. It's a lot easier to work things out and then you'll find the halfway point which would be five inches. So once we've sliced this in half we've got two sections here with opposing fabrics. I'm going to take this to the machine now and top stitch. When I sew up swatch sample fabric I've usually got lots and lots of different colours to put together. These are some that I've been working on this morning. I use exactly the same colour thread for every single one. So I've just got a grey thread in here as my top stitching. And usually grey or even a blue grey is fantastic for blending in all of the top stitching of these bags. So it saves a lot of time when you're batch sewing to just use one colour thread. What we want to do now is top stitch this fabric. Decide which way you want to top stitch. Do you want this seam here underneath to go to the plain side or if you want it to go to the printed side? Because I use the same colour thread in all my products, I like to top stitch to the printed side because the thread uh, will be less noticeable on this side than it will be if you're using a plain coloured fabric. So that's why I'm going to top stitch now to the printed side. Take this to the machine and we'll top stitch both of those pieces. So there's my top stitching with the grey thread and you'll see that the grey thread doesn't look at all bad. Even when you lose the bobbin race just here and you've got doubled up thread, it still doesn't look bad. So for me it makes a design feature out of the product. It's at this point where if you're sewing to sell and you want to put labels on, then put your labels on the bags now. I'm putting my labels on the outside of my bag and this is the orientation of my bags. When I put them together, this will be one side 
and this will be the other side. The patterns will be opposing each other. So decide where you want to put your labels. I can never decide the placement of my labels. What I usually do is I'll just take one and place it over the top of the fabric like this and see which way I like it better. Most of the time I tend to put my label over the top of the printed fabric. For, I don't know, I just think it actually looks a little bit better. If you're sewing to sell and you want to put your labels on the outside, then pop those on before you go any further. Some people might like to put their labels on the side seam. It's up to you where you put your labels. Uh, now there have been a few viewers that have told me they don't like my labels on the outside of my bags. I do occasionally put them on the inside, but I find that they sell much better with my label on the outside. A lot of my customers buy because they like the story behind my bag so they want that story visible on the outside of my product. I do tend to agree sometimes the labels look terrible on the outside but for the most part these labels actually help sell my product when they're on the outside. There we have the bags with the labels already stitched on. What we want to do next is cut our lining. I have my two lining pieces just here and my two main fabrics and the lining and main fabrics are cut to exactly the same size. I'm going to put a card slot inside the lining on one side so I want to be able to put some credit cards or business cards in there and I'm just going to place that right across the entire width of the lining fabric. The width of my fabric here is nine inches and I've got a piece of fabric nine inches wide and 14 inches long. We're going to fold this in half and then we're going to stitch right along that top edge and that's all we're going to do. We're going to leave both our short edges open, we're going to stitch along the top, turn it the right way around and then we'll do a top stitch along there and we'll also just do a top stitch on the folded edge as well. When you've done that this is what you've got. A piece of fabric with a tube and you've got a top stitched edge here and a top stitch edge here. Take one lining piece. Before we do that we need to mark a couple of lines on our fabric now. We want to mark three inch line from the outside edge down and we want to do that on both sides. So I'm just placing the three inch line on the edge of my fabric and I'll mark a line just there. Turn that around and I'll do the same again. So you've got two three inch lines from the outside edge. It leaves about a half inch gap. Take one lining fabric with the nine inches across and we're going to place this piece of fabric two inches from the top edge here. We've got two inches from the top edge down to here. We don't want to stitch this flap down because we want to use this to insert our cards but we are going to stitch straight across both of these drawn lines. So we'll go and do that now. Now the reason that we've done two rows of stitching here is because this bottom flap here is going to come up like this and sit about a quarter of an inch from the top flap. And the aim is to have a slot here so we can put a card in here and a card in here. And by having this first row of stitching you're going to stop the cards from going any further down. So we'll have a little bit of the card protruding out the top. That way you can find which card it is you're looking for. When you flip this up here and you have these channels stitched down as well, you'll also have your other cards sitting in there and, and you'll be able to see which cards are which inside your bag. We've got nine inches across here. So we just want to do two straight stitches in the center here. So we'll mark three inches from the outside edge to here, three inches from the outside edge to here, and then we'll stitch two straight lines. We can take this to the machine now and just stitch straight down there. You can, if you want to, go and do just a stitch down along the sides just to hold it in place. When you're stitching along here, we've got these edges here where we have stress points when we put the cards in and out. Back stitch at the top, back stitch there as well, and back stitch at the bottom, and do the same at the top there on that join there and at the bottom again. You 
You can see here that I've got two cards in there. This one sitting down a little bit from the top one, but you can pull it out easily and see at a glance which cards you've got in your pockets. And we'll be able to fit them on these two sides as well. Now before I put my lining pieces together, I plan on having a magnetic button at the top here. I haven't got my lining piece stabilised and depending on the strength of your lining piece, you might want to either stabilise it or just put a little piece of fabric at the back. I've got just a two to three inch piece of fabric here. It can be any scrap fabric. All I'm going to do is stitch this down along the side edge there. If you've chosen to attach that little piece on the inside of the lining, I've done that on both pieces and then place the two lining pieces together, line those both up and we're going to stitch down both side edges and along the bottom edge and we'll leave an opening of about two inches. When you've sewn your lining piece together, we've got our opening at the very top there and we've got a small opening at the bottom here for turning through later. Take your main bag piece. If you've got connecting seams here, line those up. And because the seam on the plain side is going toward the printed side on both sides, they're going in opposing directions and the seams will lock into place really well and they won't move. Make sure you remember which is the right way up so I've got my label here, that's the top of my bag. We're going to stitch the side edges and the bottom edge. Where I have seams that join each other, I like to go over that as well because it creates a bit of bulk. So I just like to make sure I triple stitch that just there. Stitch down the long edge and straight across the bottom to close that up and we'll leave the top open. The next thing we're going to do is pop your hand inside the tube there and find the point and spread this fabric apart here. We want this seam going in one direction and the seam underneath going in the opposite direction. So if you line these up nicely here and you'll feel the seams underneath. So these seams are in opposing directions and they've locked in nicely underneath. And rather than cutting out boxed corners, we're going to stitch straight over our points. Do the same for the other side. Just pop your hand in there, spread the fabric apart until it becomes a triangle. And this seam here now is going to my right. So I want the one on the opposite side to go to my left. And I'll just manipulate it so that it locks into place. Then I know that it's lined up well. I just want a very small boxed corner. I'm going to use the lines on my sewing machine as my guide and you've got your quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch line segments on your stitch plate. I'm going to use a half inch line and line up the corner of the stitching, not the corner of the fabric, but the corner of the stitching just there with that half inch line on my stitch plate and then I'll do a half inch stitch straight across there. I'll do the same for my lining. Before I do that, if you don't want to pinch your corners together like this and you'd rather measure and cut your squares, take your half inch measuring gauge and measure a half an inch from the stitching line on both sides of the corner and you'll cut this section out, then pinch the corners together and stitch it closed. It is actually quicker just to spread this apart, have your seams going in opposite, direc opposite directions, just manipulate them until they're together and then you'll stitch half an inch down. We'll take that to the machine and we'll sew all those corners closed. Once you've stitched your corners down, you can trim off the excess. And I've got a confession to make. I've gone over to my machine and I've used the three quarter inch line rather than the half inch line. But look, it's my bag, I can do what I like. So ideally though, I would just like a half inch boxed corner. It just gives me some extra length in the bag and doesn't make the bag too deep. Our boxing's finished, our lining is finished. 
We need to put our magnetic snaps on before we can put the lining into the bag and we also need to prepare our handles. Now I'm using strapping or a webbing. It's a polypropylene webbing. I buy it by the roll and it's similar to what they use in dog leads. It's quite a sturdy strapping. This one here is UV protected as well so that it's not likely to fade very easily. I've got a 60 inch length and I'm using a one inch wide. If you want to make your own handles, cut your handle at three and a half inches wide and fold it in half twice and then stitch it down both long edges. The reason we're cutting it at three and a half inches rather than four inches is just to allow a little bit of movement with the buckles that we're going to be using. So I've got a one inch wide strapping, cut at 60 inches. From that, I've cut off two pieces at two and a half inches. To secure my tabs on the side of my bag, I'll be using two one inch rectangular rings. You can use a D ring if you want to. Uh, if you want to, you can use swivel clips to join your strap as well and or triangle rings. So if that's what you've got and you prefer to use those, go right ahead. I'm going to be using two of the rectangle loops and one of these things. Place your strapping over your ring and we're going to put it on the inside of our bag. Now you can see the seam here is going to my left. So I want to make sure this seam goes to the left as well. I'll place this strapping over the top edge just there and center that. And I'll do the same for the other side. I've got my seam going to the right instead. And I'll place this one on that center, on the seam there. And I'll go and stitch that in place now. We need to attach the magnetic buttons to our bag now. So we want to find the center position of our lining. And the best way to do that is to open it out and bring the side seams together. And you can finger press the edges or you can put a pin in place. But you can see the fold just here and on this side. So that's my center position. I want to put my magnetic snap on either side and I want to bring it down a little bit from the top. We need to stitch the top edge closed when we put it in with our main fabric. We need to make an allowance for our presser foot. So you don't, you don't want to have your magnetic snap too close to the top. If I measure an inch from the top, that will allow my snap to sit there and there'll still be about three quarters of an inch there. And by the time you take into your quarter of an inch seam and the fold, you'll still have plenty of room to stitch by that. So one inch from the top, we're just going to make a mark on both sides. Grab your little ring, place that over the top there and make a mark on the long slots. So I've got two long marks just there. With your seam ripper, take the point and come in at the bottom through the layers of the lining and then bring the point out at the top there and that will stop you from ripping any further. So with your point up at the top edge of that light drawn line, you can make your little slit. So do that again. Bring your seam ripper point in at the bottom, bring it up to the top section of your mark and rip that open. Take one of your magnetic snaps, place a side that doesn't have the prong on the inside and the prongs, put them through the, mark, the slits that you've just made and grab your little washer and spread that apart. And by having that little extra piece of fabric there just gives you a little bit more stability when the snap is being pulled apart all the time. Go to the other side, take your seam ripper again, fingers in between your bag. And we'll put that washer on as well. And that's nice and secure in place. Now, when you put these magnetic snaps together, you want to make sure you've got a male and a female so that they can click together like that. Okay, let's finish this bag up. Turn your lining fabric the right way out and we're going to pop that inside our bag. Most people have a tendency to like their pockets closer to their body. So we'll place that on the opposite side. So I'm going to have that facing away from the front side of my bag. Pop that inside and then we're going to line up our seams. Now I've still got this seam here to my left. So I want my internal seam facing to my right. They're not going to snap together, but it helps distribute some of the bulk. 
When you clip this together, keep in mind that you've got a buckle on the inside. So you want to make sure that your buckle is facing down and away from any stitching area. You don't want that sitting up here and then you'll stitch across it and break your needle. So just make sure your buckle is, or your ring is facing down. And then just distribute the fabric evenly all the way around. And we're ready now to take this to the machine and close up the whole top of the bag and then we'll turn it through and we'll do a top stitch. Some people when they're making these bags actually prefer to close up their opening at the top here. So if you prefer not to have the opening at the bottom of the lining and you would rather close up your bag at the top, you can go ahead and do that. So you can leave an opening at the top here, stitch all the way around and when you turn it through, turn your seams under neatly and you can top stitch this opening closed. I don't really have a preference. I tend to chop and change whichever way I want to do something. So there's really no right or wrong way to close up your bag. Okay, I'm going to take this to the machine and stitch all the way around and then I'll turn it the right way around, top stitch and we can close up the bag. When you finish stitching the top edge of the bag together, you can turn it the right way around and poke out all the corners in the base of the outside of your bag. You don't have to worry about it with your lining because we'll do that when we finish the job later. We're going to now top stitch and when you do that, where the tabs are for the handle, you just want to go over that a couple of times just to secure that properly. And if you're happy with your bag, then you can close up that bottom opening as well. You can see here by matching up the seams and overlapping the seams when we clipped it together how nicely they line up. Same in the boxed corner there, we've got a seam on the side, we've got the seam on the bottom and the boxing just lines up really well. Isn't this bag looking really cute? I love the colour. I'm going to top stitch this now and then we'll finish up with the handle. I like to turn my bag inside out when I'm about to do the top stitching. I find that the top thread always looks nicer when you're stitching. It helps you see the outcome of your top stitching as well. I just put my fingers in the opening at the bottom there, pull it taut, that'll make the um, seam sit underneath and then I can stitch that closed. And once we've put our crossbody strap on, the bag is completely finished. Now, if you're using strapping, you want to seal the ends because they do fray. So just get a match or a lighter, melt the edges to prevent it from fraying any further. Take your strapping and place it over your slider, over that centre bar. Then we can stitch this closed. Now, depending on whether your strapping or webbing frays, if you want to, you can fold it over again and then stitch it closed and that'll get rid of all the raw edges but because I've got this fused, it should be fine. I'm just going to do it in a single layer. If you've made your handles, then you will need to just turn that edge over to hide the raw edges and stitch it closed. Okay, top stitching is done. This section of your strap is ready. Now, this part always confuses me. I always forget which way I'm supposed to put my handles on. What I'm going to do here is have this stitched area here facing up and just out of the way for the time being and I'm going to keep the same side of my handle faced up and I'm going to feed that through the, the ring and that same face here is going to go through the bottom of the ring and the top of the ring and there I have the inside section of the strap 
hidden away and then you take the other side of your strap and you bring that from the outside in and we'll stitch that closed and then our bag's finished and there we have it a very simple little crossbody bag just made with two little pieces of sample swatch fabric fully lined a magnetic snap on the inside to keep the bag closed and then you have that little card slot to keep any credit cards and business cards plenty of room in there for your phone and a purse there we have it a whole heap of uh, crossbody bags completely finished and they were all made out of sample swatch fabrics similar to this you get quite a few fabrics on the card rip off all the papers and the glue and then start putting them together so out of the swatch sample fabric i've managed to make 11 bags so far out of just that one run of colors and here are some of the colors that we've got so we've got the blue the orange the black and the gray and behind it you've got the same colors so you've got the pattern at the top the plane at the bottom turn it around and you've got the opposing colors so i've just used two pieces of fabric to put all of those together i did have a few extra pieces of fabric left over but they weren't the full size like this so what i would have is a full sheet and then a half sheet so what i've done is put a full and a half sheet together and i'm going to make a smaller wider crossbody bag out of this so i'll get another three bags out of that and then there's one that i'll make just into a little zippered toiletry bags i'll end up getting about 15 products out of just that one sample board inside the bag we have our uh, magnetic clasp and then we also have our little pocket for our credit cards or business cards and just a good handy storage area for our phones and maybe a small purse and a fully adjustable handle and that will sit over your shoulder to whichever length you'd like okay now pricing i've already put two of these in the shop they've both sold within the first couple of days of me putting them on display in the shop i sell them for 30 dollars each uh, 30 dollars australian i haven't charged for the fabric because my policy is not to charge for fabric that i get for free so all i basically charge is my labor and the strapping my labels and the magnetic clasps and the little rings there might be less than four dollars worth of product in each of my bags the rest of it is labor some people have mentioned that i should actually be charging more even though i get the fabric for free i should actually be charging for the fabric because i still have to process it i've got quite a hefty labor rate and that is all built into what i actually do I do take into account the time that it takes me to make all of these products as well i do make sure that i don't lose out anywhere anyway these are 30 dollars each in the shop i think they're going to do really well because i have had so many people ask me about crossbody bags every time they look at the other bags that i make they ask me for crossbody bags i just really haven't had the time to make many but with these sample swatch fabrics just having to put a couple of colors together it's gone very very quick for me i haven't put zips in so that's even quicker and the magnetic clasps are really simple to put in as well i think this is also going to be a great way for me to use up those hundreds of swatch boards that i still actually have out in our studio i hope you've enjoyed this video let me know in the comments down below what you think of these bags and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.